Oh. Hello, Korea. Hello. And thank you to our Korean godmother oh. for, for hosting such a great event. This is my seventh trip to Korea, uh, and it's always great to be back. Uh, the enthusiasm here uh, is so energizing to see uh, the strength of the origin community and the broader Ethereum and crypto community here uh, is, is really, really cool uh, to see. Today, I'm going to be talking about our journey and decentralizing our governance and handing over control of our smart contracts to our community. And so this is a really big and bold step for us. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our, our process there. In particular, we're going to go into the VE token model that was pioneered by Curve. We're going to talk about what it is, why it's awesome, and how we can make it better. So many of you are saying uh, Origin. I, I know you guys as uh, the NFT people, right? We've done, we've done all these record-breaking NFT sales. Uh, you may know us for the sale we did with Blau in February of last year. Did $11.7 million. And it was in the height of COVID when most artists and creators were stuck at home not making anything. And that really opened the floodgates and you can actually, looking back, you can, you can sort of look at that moment and that sale is really the point in time when NFTs entered the mainstream consciousness. Up until that time, really only people who knew what NFTs were are people at events like this. Uh, but thanks to, to that sale, we started seeing all of these mainstream artists and creators start um, getting into NFTs, but then telling their audiences uh, about crypto. Uh, one of the most surreal moments for me was watching Paris Hilton go on a Jimmy Kimmel show and talk about origin and NFTs. Crypto has taken me to some very strange and unexpected places. Uh, but, but it's really cool to see how these people can help educate and bring awareness of crypto. You know, for me, I, I, I would have bet that DeFi would be the first killer application for uh, mainstream people, but turns out it's actually JPEGs. So we actually have two products at Origin. Uh, we have Origin Story, which is the NFT platform we talked about, and Origin Dollar, which is our yield-bearing stablecoin. And so we're gonna spend most of our time on the latter one. Um, but just a quick summary for those of you who uh, are into NFTs, or interested in NFT marketplaces. Um, our product's called Origin Story. Uh, and this is where a lot of top creators have launched their NFTs. We have a marketplace where you can sell your own NFTs on your own website on your own domain name, using your own branding, you can control the entire experience. Uh, one of the things we just launched is the ability to do marketplaces. And so if you have an existing collection, you can actually create your own domain name and just have your NFTs and your collections of NFTs there uh, for sale. Uh, and this solves a problem on OpenSea. If you go and you type in Ape on OpenSea and you have dozens and dozens of different collections, it's really hard to tell which one is, is real. Um, and which one you're actually looking for. So this solves that problem. Um, we also give the, the platform fee that we collect, we actually split it with the creator. So you actually make more money uh, by driving sales for your own platform as well. Uh, and then lastly, for OGN holders, um, you can actually stake your OGN to earn a portion of the fees that are generated by the platform. And so we think this is a, a really uh, cool innovation. It's a great way for people to be able to participate and, and actually um, do something useful with their OGN they're holding. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say about origin story for right now, but if you want to learn more, you can go to story.xyz or come uh, talk to me afterwards to learn more about that. Uh, what I'll talk about today is origin dollar, uh, which is uh, the first stable coin that earns a yield while it's sitting in your wallet. So today, more value is transferred using stable coins than Bitcoin. Uh, and the reason for this is pretty obvious. You get all of the benefits of cryptocurrency, but without having to worry about the volatility. Uh, and so this is, this is a great way to uh, do international remittances or, or all sorts of uh, um, anything you would use uh, a, a dollar for, but in a digital form. Um, but one of the problems is, is that when you're holding stable coins in your wallet, you're not earning anything. Uh, and for me, that, that really bothers me. I want to always have my money put to work and, and earning a yield for me. 
And so what Origin Dollar does is backed one to one by other stablecoins, Tether, USDC, and Dai. And then those funds are deployed into some of the most battle-tested protocols in DeFi: Compound, Aave, Curve. But what's novel here is that as the protocol earns new yield, it distributes that directly to your wallet in the form of more units of Origin Dollar. So you don't have to do anything else. You just buy and hold it and watch your balance go up. The token rebases right in your wallet. Uh, for those of you who are yield farmers or have done yield farming, you're probably familiar with this common flow where you stake your stable coins in a farm. You come back, you harvest your reward tokens. You take those reward tokens, you go to Uniswap, you swap them. Then you come back, you redeposit them into the, the farm again, and you repeat the cycle as often as you can because you want compound interest. Of course, this costs a fortune in gas, and it really eats into your earnings. And so what Origin Dollar does, takes away all of that complexity. All you need to do is buy and hold it, watch uh, your balance go up, uh, and you get all of the, you know, the yields that are available in DeFi without any of the hassles. Uh, and this code has been audited by Trailer Bits uh, and Open Zeppelins, just tens of millions of dollars, and it's, just, it's very safe and secure. We recently just launched uh, a new governance token for Origin Dollar. Um, we've been around since 2017. We have OGN, which is listed on you know, Coinbase, Binance, Upbet, a lot of Bitfarm, a lot, a lot of these big exchanges. Um, but it's confusing having two tokens, or one token for two different products. It was really hard to get the tokenomics right and explain to people the value proposition and why you might want to buy and hold one of our tokens and how the value accrual would work. And so we launched OGV, we airdropped it to OGN holders. So if anyone here has OGN uh, and you haven't claimed your OGV yet, go and, and do that. Um, go find that, that claim page. Uh, you can claim that, or if you've held OUSD, uh, you'll be eligible as well. Um, but this is, as I said, the governance token for Origin Dollar. Uh, and you can actually stake your OGV for a portion of all of the fees that are generated by the protocol. So 10% of the yield is generated by OUSD goes back to the people who are staking uh, their OGV. And what's really important here is we have all these questions that come up on decisions that impact the funds and, and the security of the, the smart contracts. Questions like which strategies should we be deploying? What is the right risk profile? Should we be totally degen and chasing the highest yield no matter what? Or should we be continuing on the path we've taken today, which is being very, very safe and uh, conservative and taking all the efforts we can to make sure that things are, at, you know, no matter what, we, do, we don't lose funds. Well, the people who should be making that decision are people whose, whose funds are at risk. It should be the community. It should be those people who are making these decisions. And so uh, this is a really important shift for us uh, of actually handing over control to uh, our community to uh, actually implement and actually vote on these types of really critical decisions. As we were looking for how we wanted to structure our governance um, system, first thing we looked at was Curve. Um, and for those who are not familiar, they, they came up with this, this really great model. Um, it's now you know, known as VE token model. But it, it's really started with Curve where they said you can take your CRV, you lock it up for anywhere between one week and four years, and then you get uh, VE CRV in return, and that's your, your vote, uh, voting token um, for, uh, for participating in, uh, in their, on their protocol. And what's really, really great about this model is that it transfers power to the people who are most committed to the long-term success of a protocol. Because what it does is the longer you lock up for, the greater your economic and governance power. And so this is a, a really, really great characteristic. The more OGV, uh, sorry, but the more CRV you lock up, the more VEC RV you get, more VEC RV you get, the more um, rewards you get, is also uh, voting power. And to, as a kind of an illustration of just how successful this model is, it's been copied by dozens and dozens of other projects in crypto. Uh, you can see some of the names here, Frax, Balancer, DYDX, Yearn Finance, Platypus Finance, StakeDAO. In fact, there's even, there's so many, there's even a vemarketcap.com that has a list of all of the projects that are using this VE token model. And they have, there's almost $10 billion 
is being secured by this, this governance model that they have pioneered. But one thing that people haven't really asked is, how can we make this model better? It's great, but how can we make it better? When you look at every one on that list, almost all of them are copy-paste. Uh, exact, they've just used exact contracts that Curve wrote. And, and to be fair, that, that's actually a pretty good instinct. Um, you know, it, you, it's always a good idea to reuse battle-tested code whenever you can. And if something's working well, there's no, no shame in, in copying it. Uh, we have seen a few attempts to make it better. Uh, Frax required a whitelist for smart contracts to be able to participate. And for those of you who are following the Curve Wars, you know why. Right? Convex came along and added a wrapper to Curve's non-transferable VECRV tokens to make them liquid. And then they were able to capture um, an enormous amount of the voting power uh, for Curve. And today, the majority of the voting power uh, on Curve is, is controlled by Convex. Interestingly now, uh, Frax have partnered with Convex, so they've, they've now gone in complete opposite direction with that. Uh, Yearn um, also op offered an option to uh, exit early uh, before the, the lockup expires, um, but for a fee. But again, other than these couple small tweaks, we haven't seen a whole lot of uh, changes to these contracts. And so as we started working on it, we came up with a little bit of a wish list of how, you know, in an ideal world, what would our, these contracts look like? Um, one thing we thought would be nice would be to have it written in Solidity instead of Viper. Uh, our stack, is, our development stack is a Solidity. Uh, nothing, nothing against Viper, but that's just how we have everything else set up, and so it, it'd be convenient to have these contracts in, in Solidity. And when we looked at the code, we said, there's, it's kind of complex. There's like a lot of uh, things here that we could improve, and, and by removing complexity, we could probably uh, improve uh, some of the gas uh, costs. And if we can lower our gas costs, maybe that will help in encourage uh, higher participation in decentralized governance. One of the weird quirks with Curve's model is that their, your voting power decays over time. And that means that the amount of voting power you have is, not, is different from the amount of tokens that are transferred to you when you do your initial stake. And so if you sum up all your, your transfer events, you come up with a number, but it's not actually representative of what your current voting power is. And this means that if you're uh, you know, building a, 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 like a Zapper type of integration, you have to actually go and check the smart contract to know what the voting balance is. You can't, there's no way to just like look at how many tokens in, are in your wallet and know what your current voting balance is. Um, kind of a convenience thing, but you can only have on Curve, you can only have a single lock per wallet. So unlike Convex, we can create multiple uh, locks, one wallet, one lock. And so, you know, it's, it's very convenient to be able to say, hey, I want to lock half my tokens for one year and half my tokens for four years. Um, on Curve, you have to split them up between multiple wallets and it's kind of, kind of a pain to do that. Uh, but probably the most important feature we wanted, and it was, turned out to be the hardest one to implement on Curve's contracts, was voter delegation. And there were really two reasons we wanted this. First, we see this problem all through DeFi and crypto where there's low participation in governance overall. Not a whole lot of people are taking the time, especially paying gas, to go and vote on these important issues. And it's not actually reasonable to ask everyone to be paying attention to every single proposal that is, that is going through. But a great thing you could do here is actually ask people instead to delegate their votes to the people they trust in the community. People they know are going to be paying attention, they know are going to um, you know, watch their back and be making smart decisions. So representative government is, is a great uh, model here and something we wanted to support. And then the second use case uh, is one we have personally of like where we want to separate where we store our, our funds and where we do our, our voting. So you might want to hold your, um, if you're holding a lot of a governance token, you probably want to do that in a multi-sig wallet or cold storage of some form. Uh, but if you're doing weekly voting, it, it's a lot more convenient if you could do that from a MetaMask wallet. And so a voter delegation system lets you do that. You can have your multi-sig delegate to your, to your MetaMask wallet, and then it's really fast and easy uh, to do that. 
So as we started trying to implement voter delegation, we ran into this, this problem. Uh, and it is, the challenge is that the decay, the decay function, uh, did, uh, the, your voting power decays over time on curve. And the reason for this is, is actually makes a lot of sense. And that is, uh, we don't want someone to be able to, to vote in the very last second of our lockup for something that would be harmful for the whole pro protocol. So you could vote in something terrible and then get all your money and get out and leave everyone else behind with a problem. And so as a, the solution is you have your, you start off with a lot of voting power because you're committed for four years. And then, you know, and by the time you get to the end of your lockup, you run up, you go down to, to no power and then you're, you're out, right? And you have to recommit in order to get that power again. But the problem is, uh, when you're trying to do voter delegation, the slope of these lines, how much voting power you have, changes depending on the length of the lockup. So here, you can see, imagine these being two different users, one in blue and one in orange, and they both want to delegate uh, their, their voting power to someone awesome like Erica, and say, hey, we trust Erica to make good decisions uh, on our behalf. And so here is the combined formula of how much voting power it is. Uh-oh. It's not very simple math uh, to combine these two, uh, these two voting powers and express that. Common use case, of course, we want to be able to know what percentage of the total voting power you have, right? So we've got the two users delegating it to Erica. How much combined voting power do they have in the network? Eh. That's, I mean, I could probably dust off some high school geometry and figure out a formula to do that, but it doesn't look particularly easy uh, or ideal f to represent. That's, that's just two users. What if we try four? So again, four users all delegating their voting power for different times, lockup durations. Uh-oh. This is not, I, I don't know how, how you represent that uh, in, in math and certainly not in a solidity contract. This is, uh, this is a real challenge. How, how do you do this? And then one of the brilliant engineers at origin, Daniel Von Fange, a uh, well-known security expert in this space, asked a really important question. He said, what if we used an exponential decay instead of a linear decay? He called it radioactive decay. It's like the half-life of plutonium, right? We know that the half-life of plutonium is 24,000 years. We know that it's going to decay at a, a set rate, no matter um, the slope here. So here we can look at what this would look like. So here again, we have our, our first user, this time with uh, exponential decay. We add in a second one, okay. And now, the com because they're decaying at the same rate, combining the, vo the voting power from these two users is a lot simpler. It only changes Notably, the slope only changes when someone's staking. So when someone new stakes, it changes, that's, that's it. And so it means we have way less writes on chain, and it means we don't have to iterate through these checkpoints and all these different times to calculate what people's voting power is. And so now, when we look at it as a percentage of how much you have uh, per user, it's much, much simpler than what we had before. We can do it again with four users here and see what it looks like. That's a lot easier. As again, you can see we only have to worry about it when someone's staking or unstaking. And so that means that you're, when, when someone else uh, stakes, your relative staking power goes down. And when someone unstakes, your voting, relative voting power goes up. Kind of simple. So let's compare. Well, we have linear, the VECRV model, requires weekly checkpoints. So you have 208 checkpoints across four years, and you have to check in each of these checkpoints how, what everyone's balances are. You've got expensive for loops iterating through those, and you've got lots of on-chain writes. You've got to store um, the time, the block, the bias, the slope, and you've got to think about both past and future slope changes to these, to these uh, different lines. On the exponential model, the VEOGV model, no checkpoints, no, no for loops, and we only need to write three things. The time, 
the block and the points because we know that the k function is always going to be exactly the same. The second thing we did, we realized there's another innovation here uh, that can make things a lot simpler. And we were inspired by the way that you handle um, equity, right? So if you raise funding for your company and you issue a bunch of stocks to your seed investors, and then Andreessen Horowitz comes along and says, uh, we want to give you $10 million, you don't go back to your existing investors and say, hey, give us some of your stock back because we need, we need some to give to Andreessen Horowitz. No, you don't do that. You just print a bunch more, right? And then you give it to Andreessen Horowitz and then your, everyone else is diluted. But what's cool about that is everyone gets to keep the, sh the shares that they have. And so this is the similar model we used here. We realized we don't actually need to decay anyone's voting power. We don't need to take it away from them. We'll give you your votes, you get to keep the votes, but over time we'll just get, give out increasingly more to other people to dilute you, right? Does that make sense? So this means that news takers are getting increasingly more tokens over time, and then you're, you get to keep the same number of votes, but as a percentage of your total voting power is decreasing over time, uh, and that's how we, we implemented it. So here we have the VECRV model. You've got linear voting decay, number of votes decreases over time, and you need to go to the smart contract, the curve smart contract, to know, find out what the current um, weight is of your voting power. For the OGV model, we have the exponential decay, the decay happens via dilution, number of votes you get stays the same. So this solves the problem we had of the integrations of all the different uh, wallets and, and dashboards, not knowing how many votes you have. Now, you just look. You just look at how many tokens in your wallet, that's how many votes you have. And the only other thing you need to care about is what are, how many total votes are in existence, and then that, that is how you determine your percentage voting power. And then one of the, the really cool things here is that also makes it compatible with Open Zeppelin's ERC-20 snapshot. So that gives us a really, really cheap and efficient way to know exactly what anyone's balance is at any particular block. And so this is incredibly important for voting on different proposals because you want to know this proposal was issued at this time, that who, how, you know, who had uh, voting power at that block and we can, you can see all of that just by using the ERC-20 snapshot uh, plugin. So what, when we finally got done with this code, we were really happy. And not only with all of these features, we were able to knock out every single thing on our wish list that we, we wanted as far as improvements, and we were able to do it at a huge gas reduction. For a lock, 20% savings on gas. For an extension on, I want to extend my lock, 34% savings on gas. Unlocking or claiming, 51% savings on gas. Again, you have lower gas costs, it's less friction to get people to participate in governance. And finally, the delegation, uh, which isn't even, uh, even possible to implement on, on Curves Viper contracts, we were able to get it done for only 102,000 GUI. And the reason for that is just it's so simple. We're just adding up the balances of how many tokens uh, everyone has. So you're able to do voter delegation really, really cheaply and cost effectively. So there are a few quirks and trade-offs you should be aware of. Um, one is that at the end of it, because it's exponential curve, it, doesn't get, it never gets all the way to zero. And so it gets down to close to zero, but doesn't get quite there. And then there's some residual voting power at the end uh, that they still have until they actually claim their tokens. Uh, and we decided we were, we were okay uh, with that trade-off. Um, this probably makes sense, but you're getting exponentially more tokens um, because it's an exponential curve, right? So uh, in the curves model, you lock up 100 CRV. For four years, you get 100 VE uh, CRV. In the VE OGV model, you lock up 100 OGV, and you'll get something like 1,000 VE OGV back in return. So it's, a, it's more of an exponential curve. This means there's a greater difference between the people who are locking up for the long term uh, versus the short term. Uh, but that is quite in line with our intended goals anyway, so, so we're okay with that as well. Um, this is a, another thing. Um, the voting power is, because we're only changing the voting power when people stake or unstake, if, if you're not having pretty active participation in your governance and people staking and unstaking, you're not going to have um, 
you know, people's voting power will stay the same until someone else um, comes along and, and dilutes everyone else. So um, you have to be okay with that. Obviously, um, you want to have active uh, governance uh, going on. Easy enough for you to come along and, and be that person to, um, you know, to stake if no one else is doing it. So many of you are probably familiar with Uniswap's formula, the x times y equals k. That, that's the, the magic formula that powers all of Uniswap. Uh, the, the, the magic uh, behind this is, is every bit as, as easy. Uh, so the way you compute what VEOGV, uh, amount of VEOGV you get, is based on how many tokens you have, times this constant k, raised to the power of y, where well, y is the end of your staking period. Uh, and so you can see here some different k values, and then how those different values impact the relative boost in voting power uh, for locking for the maximum amount of time uh, versus the shortest amount of time. Uh, and so we, we decided to go kind of extreme with it. We, tried, we started at 1.8, which means you're getting about 10 times more power for locking up for four years than, uh, than for the minimum of one month. Um, but you can choose, um, you know, so whatever k value you want uh, for this. So if you want to use this, it's 100% open source. Uh, it's only 175 lines of code, um, and it has, um, you know, uses standard Open Zeppelin libraries. Uh, it also has Master Chef style rewards uh, distribution built right in. So um, you, you've all seen uh, Master Chef style rewards, I'm sure, where you can add extra rewards uh, for people who are staking, and that's something we're doing uh, for uh, people who are staking on our platform as well. All of this has been audited by Open Zeppelin, we have the audits out there, um, and it's live. So theogv.eth, if you want to go check out the smart contract for yourself. Uh, we also have this cool dashboard, uh, governance.ousd.com. You can actually play with this. You can go buy some OGV on an exchange or a DEX. Um, you can lock it up. You can see how this works. Uh, as you can see right now, very generous staking rewards uh, for people who are participating in this, uh, as we really want to encourage people to Check it out and, and help, um, you know, help in this experiment of, of handing over control uh, to our community. Uh, so I think I'm out of time, but I just want to say, remind you again: if you're interested in NFTs, you can go to story.xyz. If you want to learn more about Origin Dollar uh, or play around with the decentralized um, governance we have there, ousd.com is your best starting point for that. Uh, and, and finally, I would just say, like, none of this would be possible without. Uh, the great work that, that Curve did. We're, you know, we truly are standing on the shoulders of giants, not only Curve, but also just everyone in this, in this community. So thank you all. I'm Josh Fraser. Have a great night.